Welcome to the Be Better broadcast, where we bring you tips and strategies and techniques to help you to live an extraordinary life and achieve self mastery. You know, we love to bring you experts and guests who specialize in specific areas of self mastery. And today we're going to talk all about how you can practice self care, even as the busy professional that you are. Listen, We've all got a ton of things going on in our life. You're either someone who's working in a corporate job or you're working for a company or you're a business owner and working for a company and you've got a family and you've got all these different things that you want to incorporate into your life and it's causing you stress. It's causing you anxiety. And 57%, again, it's just one of these numbers that I found on the internet, but 57% of people have admitted that, especially last year, they felt much more stress in their life when it came to incorporating a self-care routine. And today we're going to talk to somebody who is an expert in the area of self-care. She's an expert in the areas of fitness. So without further ado, let's talk to our expert guest for today, Allison Jackson. And for those who don't know Allison, Allison is the founder of Allison Jackson Fitness and is passionate about all things health and fitness. She loves sharing her knowledge and expertise to help corporate moms get lean, eating foods that they love so that they can be at their best. She knows exactly how hard it is to work full time, take care of the kids and household, plus try to fit in working out, eating right, and taking care of herself Two, Allison has spent the last eight years training and competing in figure competitions, even winning three pro cards in one year, which is awesome. So she has a crystal clear picture of what it takes to get to your ideal weight and stay there, but specifically how to incorporate fitness and self-care into your everyday routine. Allison, it's a pleasure to have you with us today. Oh, Brandon, thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm so excited to finally have you on the broadcast because we met each other on Kawan Karadagi's podcast, uh, Valueverse, which is incredible, guys. And I was also a guest on Allison's podcast, Fit to Lead, which was an awesome conversation. And now we're going to talk all about your realm of expertise. So I'm super curious when people come to you for guidance and when people come to you for coaching, so your ideal clients, what are the general things that you're finding most of your clients struggle with right now in today's world? Yeah, so mainly a lot of the clients that I work with struggle with accountability, struggle with understanding the right foods to eat to reach their goals. And a lot of their goals revolve around obviously, um, losing weight, going to the gym, just feeling good in their own skin. Um, So a lot of it is really around coaching them to build into their routines, um, you know, the healthy eating, the workouts, the prioritizing self care and creating boundaries. Now, when they come to you with like all these different things, right? I feel like a lot of people, they have an idea of why they're coming to you for help. They might be stressed. They might be anxious. They want to incorporate fitness, more self-care. Like that's a lot of different things. And especially as a coach, I'm sure you've pinpointed, okay, well, when we focus on this one specific area, it's getting people the best results possible. Where do you tend to pinpoint your focus when somebody first comes to you with all these different things that they want your guidance with? So it's funny because there's like, I I say there's three pillars, right? There's nutrition, there's the movement, and then there's the mindset. And it's funny because when you really dial in your nutrition, that's going to give you 90% of your results. But without the right mindset, um, the movement and the the nutrition are really hard to um, lock onto and really build into your daily routine. So mindset plays a really critical role. So I would rank it as mindset, nutrition, and then movement. Mindset, nutrition, and then movement. Okay. Now what, because I, I love talking about mindset. I love talking about how our thoughts determine how we feel and how we feel determines what actions we take in the first place. Because if we're not feeling too hot, we're probably not going to take that first step to actually go to the gym and do the things that we want to do. How do you start to help people with mindset? It's the first thing that you mentioned. So is that one of the first areas you actually start to work with someone on? Yeah, so uh, generally what we'll do is we'll actually start with nutrition and then we'll see how consistent they are, how how much they adapt to kind of the, the guidelines and the framework that I provide. Um, from there, if they are struggling, one of the things I have them do before we even start working together is to talk about their five whys. Why is it important to get healthy? Why do they want to lose weight? Um, and what will happen is as you go along, you'll find that maybe you, maybe your motivation wanes or maybe you're struggling, you're hitting a plateau. We'll come back to those five whys and be like, okay, so why 
do you want this? And it's about drilling down. It's not just, oh, I want to look good in a bikini. Well, why? Well, I want to be healthy. Well, why? Because I want to help. I want to be around for my kids. I want to be able to, you know, play with my kids. I want to reduce my cholesterol and, and be a role model. So it's really digging in deep to, to find out at the core, why do they really want these goals? Yeah, that's super powerful. I found that sometimes when people come to me for, you know, help or guidance, and, and we focus on similar areas, you're much more of an expert in the area of fitness specifically. People tend to look at me weird when they say things to me like, you know, I want to focus on feeling better. I want to feel happier. I want to earn more money. I want to have more confidence. And when I start to dive into their whys with them, they're like, why are we talking about my why? Like, I came here to be more confident. Can't you just give me strategies and tips to do that? So it's fascinating to me that you start with this process called the five whys. Why is, really strange question, but why is understanding your why so important and so valuable in this journey of self-transformation? Yeah, because I, you know, I feel like aesthetics, that is not going to get you through those tough spots and those hard times. Um, it's really digging deep to understand at the core, what is it that you truly want? Because that's what you're going to come back to when, like I said, you're struggling or you hit a plateau. It's not, you know, uh, get looking good at bikinis, all you get to get you so far, but like feeling good in your own skin, feeling confident, being a role model, those are deep wise those are real reasons that are going to keep you motivated and keep you going in the long term yeah it's so true especially when you do hit the roadblock and you're able to think back to okay and yet sometimes the why can be a shallow thing like i know for me especially when i have something planned that's coming up i put utmost focus on the way that i look and the way that i feel especially but more so the way that i look if i'm going to be on the beach then i know okay i've got a month to get myself into tip-top shape and i can generally do that in a month i know everyone's different but a lot of the times that why can be something that's more deep-rooted right like you mm -hmm. want to be around to see your daughter get married you want to be able to see your children graduate you want to be able to take the family trip that you've wanted to take and in whatever area of life it is you're focused on but the why is so valuable there now, when people come to you, I'm sure that they have a worry of, okay, like I want to incorporate these things into my life, but I'm so busy. I've got so much going on. They've already taken the step to go out of their way to reach out to you and start working with you. How do you help people to ease self-care? And let's talk specifically fitness, because I know for me, fitness was the one area of life where when I started incorporating it into my life, everything changed for me. Like within a couple months, I started to feel better, more importantly, but then I started to see my body change too. Other people saw it before me, which was crazy. But how do you help people to take baby steps into easing fitness or self-care back into their life? Yeah, so I try to meet people where they are. So a lot of people look at me and like, I don't want to be a figure competitor. I just want to get into shape. So, you know, if you're if you have a desk job, I always tell people track your steps and just build off of there. So if right now you're at 5000, shoot for seven. If you're at seven, shoot for 10. Um, getting that movement throughout the day is super important. I mean, the, the dedicated workouts are important. But if you're starting from ground zero, that right there is one thing that you could easily do. I mean, walking and just incorporating steps throughout your day um, is huge. And, and very beneficial uh, in terms of, you know, burning calories, getting that movement. And especially too, if you, you know, work out for an hour and then you sit at a desk all day, it's like, that's not really, I mean, you want to just constantly <laughs> be moving, right? That's so powerful. For people who are already saying to themselves, okay, like movement sounds, it sounds great. Like I already know that moving more is going to help me when it comes to this. What are some ways that you recommend people to get out there and to move more and maybe not even to get out there, but even like move more in their place of work or at home. Like, are there like specific strategies that you recommend to people to get more movement in? Yeah, I think a lot of people have uh, their brains locked on. I have to get a full 30 minute or 60 minute workout. But what you could really do is take 10 minutes before work, 10 minutes at lunch, 10 minutes after work, just build breaks into your day to step away from your computer, because that's not only going to help you get your steps, it's going to help refresh you uh, stepping away from that computer screen. I know a lot of people are tethered uh, with meetings and work and, and all that. So it's really about carving out that time throughout the day and literally five or 10 minutes. It doesn't have to be a, a long amount of time, but it's amazing what it'll do, um, not only for your body, but for your mindset. Absolutely. You know, when I started to, especially when I started the 75 hard challenge, you have to get outside and have an outdoor workout. 
And for me, a lot of the time that was like an intermittent run and then I would walk and then I would run. It was like intervals in, in a sense. And what I would do is I would ask myself, how can I do this while also achieving some of my tasks for the day at the same time? So I would look at my calendar and if I saw that I had like a networking call where I was meeting someone new or if I was having like a, a business call with the Level Up Your Business group that I work with, I would let them know beforehand, hey, just so you guys know, I'm going to be outside during this. Is there anything that I need to have ready for the presentation so I can have it like on my person or on my cell phone? And I would be on my walk while I was getting important things done. So I was accomplishing several things at one time, which wasn't always ideal because you know, sometimes you just want to appreciate the trees and nature and just be with yourself and think. So you can do that some of the times. But I found that that really helped me to do several things at the same time while getting that movement in. Is there like an amount of steps that you find is like an ideal amount for the average person or does it really depend on that person and their own specific fitness goals? I mean, you always hear the 10,000 steps, right? Um, which I, now I'm hearing is like a marketing ploy, but um, I always say, you know, start from where you are. So if 3,000 is what you're getting on a daily basis, then shoot for 5,000, shoot for 6,000. And then once you get to that, add 10%. So I think it's really, it depends on the individual. So if somebody is already at 12,000 steps, well, then 15 is going to be something that they want to strive for. Um, so I, I think it really varies by individual. Okay. I love that. And yeah, I found that that 10,000 mark, it's hard to get there sometimes. Like, totally. It really is. Like my average would probably be just being real, probably five to 6,000 steps would be my average. Some days, like I'll look down and I've got, and it's like depressing when I look at it. So I try not to on those days, but it's like 1700 steps. But let me tell you, I feel the difference at 1700 steps versus 6,000 and at over 10,000, like it's like you've ascended into a different realm of the way that you feel for mm -hmm. that day. It's like, because even when I've gone on some big hikes, I'll get back home and I've got like 15,000 steps. So the way that I think about it is if I have 10,000 steps, it's like I hiked a mountain just going about my daily life. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And it's funny because I find that I get more steps on vacation. So I just got back from vacation. I was hitting like 15,000, 17,000 steps. I mean, granted, we're at a resort that's very spread out, but you'd be surprised how much more active you are on vacation. It's so funny you say that because at the resort that we were at, our room was literally room like 11,000. So it was in building 11. And we, to get to any restaurant, we like had to work out to get there. Like the walk was <laughs> so far and we actually enjoyed it because we actually, we don't, we don't gain any weight going on vacation. Like we actually feel better physically getting home from vacation than we do just going throughout our daily lives. Cause we're, like you said, we're getting like 15,000 steps in. And I would look at my wife throughout the day and be like, we've already got 8,000 yeah. steps. We've already got 12,000. We've already got 13. And it just brings a sense of accomplishment and progress to yes. that journey at the same time, which is so cool. I totally agree. I felt the same way. It's like, oh, well, at least, you know, get more steps. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you feel better about the dessert at the restaurant for sure. Yeah, totally. So we're on the topic of specifically you working with clients. And we have a question here. And this question is, good morning. If someone is looking for coaching, how often do you usually meet with them to make sure that they stay motivated? and committed. So what does that look like? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, with my clients, I typically have weekly check-ins. So they fill out a short little Google form. Um, we're connected on WhatsApp and I will leave them voice memos or text messages. Um, and then, you know, depending, it depends on the individual, but weekly seems to be a nice sweet spot. Some people want more than that. Some people want like an extra, like make sure I'm working out. Or um, I have uh, one client where we'll swap steps. So we'll send pictures of each other's, you know, Apple Watch or Fitbit, but weekly in general works really well for people. Yeah, that's a pretty solid amount of time for sure. Especially it's the time in between the sessions that you really see the most progress. Yes. Because sure. you meet, you have a great conversation, you dive into your goals. It's really like an accountability check too, I found. Mm -hmm. And then in between, you get messages from your clients on what they're doing. You're able to celebrate them. You're able to help them through tough times that way. I found that voice messages are really awesome because yeah. it's like you're together, but it's not like the back and forth and the time consuming back and forth that like an actual session would bring. Yeah. Cause so, I used to do, I used yeah. to do 
typically like coach 30 minute coaching calls, but I'd find like what we covered during the calls could really be covered on WhatsApp. It wasn't like we were covering anything that drastically different. What specifically do you like to cover during that actual face to face sh session with a client? I love to hear how they're feeling, like how's their energy, how's their sleep, their water intake, their fiber. So I, I try to look at it holistically. So the scale, if the scale is moving or not moving, it's like I want the whole picture of how everything else is going because you'd be surprised at how water, stress, lack of fiber, um, different things really impact the scale. So I always like to hear how people are doing in general. They might be struggling, like be really um, stressed out at work or have a stressful family situation, which will impact your progress. Yeah, for sure. So let's talk about you. Okay. Let's talk about how you got into this world, right? And I know that you've got an awesome story. How did you find yourself in this world of self-care, fitness, helping other people? Like if you had to condense it, like how would you yeah. explain your story to people? Yeah, I'll give you the Cliff Notes version. So I was always in a fit I was always in a fitness like since high school. I used to read my dad's muscle fitness magazines, but I always struggled with my weight. Um, gained the freshman 15 in college. And um, I always looked at those muscle fitness magazines and I was like, oh, if I can only look like that, like to be able to take a diet and workouts and do that. So that was always in the back of my head. So fast forward, get married, have kids, work a job. That was always in the back of my head to do that. So in 2012, I finally competed in a figure competition. I thought it'd be just a bucket list item, just be one and done. Um, I got hooked, I started doing it year after year. And then people started asking me like, how are you prepping for these shows? Like, what are you eating? How are you working out? Um, so then I started coaching and then lo and behold, the pandemic hit, which, you know, obviously people really need to help more than ever. Um, during that time, I actually got my yoga teacher certification um, and it really um, did a deep dive in terms of mindfulness, mindset, meditation, all that stuff. Um, and I felt like, wow, like now I, I just have this whole holistic picture of health. Um, and I really realized like people really need help prioritizing their self care. So that's kind of like how it kind of came full circle. Let's talk about the time where you first decided that you want to compete in a competition. Mm -hmm. Because I was at one point, I was a runner. And not, I wasn't really a runner, but I guess more than most people. And I was thinking about competing in even something like a, a 5K. And to me, that's that was really scary. And I still actually haven't done that. And that is something I want to do. So when you decided, okay, I'm going to do this competition. I'm going to get into the necessary shape for this competition. What were some of the fears that you were experiencing? And how did you work to overcome those fears in the moment? Of course, the first fear is like, oh my God, I like I grew up wearing t-shirts over my bathing suit. Like I didn't want anybody to look at me. I didn't wasn't very proud of my body. Like I was just very self-conscious. So I was like, how the heck am I gonna get on stage in a bikini and heels um, next to these other women? So that was my biggest fear. Like, am I gonna be ready? Could I do this? Will my body change the way it needs to change? So I enlisted a coach who specifically helped with figure competitions. Um, and I would recommend anyone with any goal, whether it's a 5K, uh, your career, a business, like whatever you need, get a coach because they're gonna help you fast track your progress and guide you and coach you because they've done it before. Um, so that that helped a lot, uh, having that third party, like subjective person being able to say, yeah, you're ready or no, you're not. It really is because like, even when I started working out myself, even the gym was really scary to me because I didn't know who was going to be in there. I didn't know if the machines that I wanted were going to be free. I didn't even know how to work out. And a lot of people are nervous because they don't even know any people who were in this space who could help them. And it's funny because my mentor at the time, sure, we went to the gym physically occasionally. We started going together at the beginning. But then after that, it would be months without me seeing him, yet I was still making great progress. And I feel that a lot of people think, okay, well, in order for me to get the results that I want, I need to have a physical personal trainer, someone who can physically go to the gym with me. But coming from my own situation, I'm. It, it's easy to say that that's not the case. You can get just as great results working with someone virtually, someone to help hold you accountable, someone to help you create a plan, help you create a workout routine. You can get just as much virtually as you can physically. When people express the fear to you, because it really is a fear of, oh, I don't know if I'm going to get the results that I want, just like you before your competition. And they're worried about signing up with you, a virtual coach who might not be there with them physically, because you help people all over the country. Mm -hmm. 
what are some ways that you help them to ease that fear of working with someone virtually versus being in person? Yeah. So um, it's funny because a lot of people want like that in-person personal training. And I'm like, yeah, I don't do that. I can provide you all the resources you need. But I think it's important that with online, having a virtual coach, you're available like all the time. Like I, it doesn't matter where you are, what time it is. I mean, granted, I'm not like 24-7 you know, answering emails, but for the most part, um, you just have that much more access to your coach versus one on one. It's like you have this set one on, you know, in person meeting. Um, I feel like virtual is just so much more flexible. You know, there's so much more opportunity to really be able to help people um, versus in person. And it's so funny because I have a couple clients who are literally within 30 minutes of me. And I've been working with them for one of them specifically over six months. I've been working with them. And I haven't physically met them one time because we're so busy. Like we've always got something going on yet. I have a deeper relationship with that individual than some of the people that I coach physically in person, which blows my mind. But I feel that when you haven't met somebody, you can almost go deeper with that person than if you did physically meet them. Have you seen that show? I think it was on Netflix, but it's uh, love at first sight or love. Mm -hmm. is, it's called love is blind. Yes. You've seen that. Okay. Yes. Yes. It's so fascinating because these people, for those who haven't seen it, it's these contestants who go on the show and there's a wall separating them and they have to decide whether they want to marry one of the contestants without ever seeing the contestant. All they get to do is have a conversation with them literally through a wall. And after they decide to marry each other and meet each other physically, is when they start having problems. And That's it funny. blows my mind. Like, what is this thing about seeing somebody and being there physically? It's a different energy when you're virtual. And there's obviously, like, I'm not saying don't ever get a physical trainer. Like, there's benefits yeah. to both physical and virtual. But I, I found that that's a fear that a lot of people have is that virtual sense of training. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. We've talked a lot about the fitness side of things, right? And I still want to. I have a specific question, like a personal question that I want to ask you a little bit later on. But when it comes to overall self-care, especially for a busy professional, do you offer specific mindset strategies to people? Like, okay, listen, it's great that you've gotten more movement. Now I want you to incorporate this specific mindset principle into your everyday routine? Like, are there specific routines or rituals or mindset practices that you recommend that people do when they work with you as well? Yeah. So I typically recommend people, um, especially busy, you know, working professionals carve out time to meditate and carve out time to create a list of things that they're grateful for, um, to keep them kind of positive and motivated. Because I do find, you know, you have the growth mindset and the fixed mindset. And a lot of times that's what you come up against is like all these reasons why you can't either reach your goal or eat right or get your workout in um, instead of looking at, okay, what do I learn from this? How do I overcome this obstacle? So it's really, I try to get most of my clients to, if, the, if they're meditating, you know, um, do it twice a day versus once a day. If they haven't started meditating to just try, use a guided meditation. There's tons of free apps, uh, but it makes such a difference just in terms of getting grounded and not letting stress overwhelm you. Um, Cause we do have a lot of stress and emotional eaters. How has, because I, I know you said you, you were certified in a yoga mm -hmm. teacher for the longest time. And do you still do that by the way? I do. It's funny. I just do. I do like a free Sunday morning class just to I just like for friends and family just to keep in, in practice. But um, but I personally love meditating. It's it's been a game changer. I started about two years ago um, and it makes just a world of difference in terms of managing stress, managing overwhelm, getting grounded, keeping that that growth mindset. How specifically has meditation and that gratitude practice helped you? Like what what differences did you start to see after using them? Like, did it also take a certain amount of time after starting them to see the results? Like, what did that look like for you? Yeah. So at first I was like, I know I'm not doing this right. What's the benefit? What's the point? Um, but after a couple months of really faithfully doing five to 10 minutes every day, um, I just realized that I wasn't triggered. I didn't get like my heart went not race. Like when I got stressed, I didn't always feel that sense of overwhelm. Um, it just helped me kind of deal with stress and manage problems and issues much in a much calmer way than before. Yeah, I, I found the same thing with me with practicing 
gratitude. And like, I always tell people, cause they look at me funny when I say practicing gratitude, but like you said, you take five to 10 minutes to actually do it. And it, it is a practice. You're physically doing it and putting your focus and attention and your own personal power towards it in that moment to think of things that make you happy, to think of things that make you smile, think of things that you're grateful for in your life. And the more th- time you spend on this, the more things that you actually find that make you grateful. But you start to actually see different things in your environment the more that you do this because yeah. you're training your brain in a different way to be more conscious, to be more open, to be more aware. And that was like one of the biggest things for me was when I started to become more aware of my thoughts, more aware of my feelings is when I really started to have more power over how I felt. Do you recommend a ritual to people? Like I know a lot of people talk about the importance of like a morning ritual. Do you recommend that to people or do you think it's a per person kind of thing? Like, is it personalized? Like what do you personally do and and how do you recommend those sorts of things to people if at all? Yeah. I always recommend a morning ritual for people just to like get your day off on the right foot. So for me, I always have to, I have to get up a workout. Um, and then typically before I log on for the day, I will meditate, I will journal. And then, um, I use Oracle cards, which I'm a huge fan of. Um, But it just kind of just like, it's just a great way to start the day. And within that journaling, I have this quadrant. So it's kind of like what I'm grateful for, what I want to manifest, what I want to let go and what I want to improve. And it's just like a short little list of like things. And I just feel like it gets, you know, gets the day started off on the right foot. I love that. Yeah, I also agree. Like if you are getting up and like immediately just hopping in the shower and going to work and then you get home and then you watch TV like you're never truly taking any time for you and I found a drastic difference in simply giving yourself some time before you go to do anything else like you coming first at the beginning of your day has made a huge difference for me and a lot of people that I've worked with as well so I was curious of your thoughts on that yeah. very cool Let's talk about me now and and a lot of other people who are listening <laughs> who have the same exact problem. OK, so I found that for me and I know like what it is, right? Like for me personally, I perform my best when I'm challenged. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that's literally taking a challenge. Like when I started 75 hard, I hated doing the second workout every single day and sometimes even the first workout every single day. But I did it because I knew if I didn't do it, I'd fail the challenge and other people would know and find out that I failed because I'm just, (laughs) I'm not going to lie and say that I'm still on the challenge. Right. But when the challenge ended, I lost the quote unquote motivation to sometimes even get the first workout in. Like personally, I haven't been to the gym. Like I told you before we started filming, I haven't been to the gym in like three weeks now. I've still been moving, trying to get at least 6,000 steps in sometimes very rarely 10,000 steps. Like how would you motivate someone busy like me with a business and a job and clients and, and all everyone watching and listening is busy with kids and family. Like how would you recommend that, the everyday person build motivation to do the things that they know they should do, such as workout. Yes. So what I like to do, and if anyone's read the book Atomic Habits by James Clear, um, it's find a reward or a trigger that's going to increase the likelihood of you doing it. So maybe you really like those outdoor workouts because you got a chance to, to get outside in, in the nice weather. So maybe it's, all right, I'm going to take at least 10 minutes and then I'll, I'll listen to my favorite podcast while I'm out there. Um, so it's looking for little rewards. And I do the same thing, like I'm trying to hit my steps. I'm like, all right, just get back on the treadmill and you could read a couple pages of your favorite book or listen to your favorite podcast. So, and it's funny because I did this with my mom too. I'm trying to get her to walk and she loves to play like this game on her iPad. I'm like, all right, you can't play the game until you go for the walk. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's like, look for ways to reward yourself. That's going to motivate you um, to, to do the thing, right? Uh, cause I'm with you. I'm the same way. Like I find I don't stick to my diet workouts unless I'm prepping for a show. So it's like, all right, what's the motivation factor? Um, if there's no vacation or no show to, to keep going. So it's looking for those little rewards that you could build in on a daily basis. It's like building in something that you can even look forward to. Yes. Like you can look forward to, okay, if I get my workout done, I'm going to treat myself to one episode of the new season of Dexter or like whatever it is that you enjoy doing. Like maybe not reward yourself with a piece of, you know, double glazed chocolate cake. Don't reward yourself with food. (laughs) (laughs) But using your common sense, even like when you were competing or, well, I'll even ask you, like when you were 
going into your first competition, like what were the rewards that you created in your mind as a picture? Like for me, sometimes the reward is I'll think about how I'll feel after doing the thing that I don't want to do in this moment. So even thinking about how you'll feel after the workout can give you the energy in that moment to put on the gym clothes and actually get out the door. And once you're on your way, you're probably not going to turn around. You're probably going to do it. So how do you like, what pictures do you create in your own mind when you're preparing for competitions or even to do the things that you don't want to do? Yeah, I think um, I think visualization plays a huge role, whether it's visualizing like winning, getting that trophy or medal, visualizing feeling and looking good um, in like an outfit or a bathing suit or whatever. Um, I think that plays a huge role, probably more so than people think that if you picture yourself the way you want to feel or how you want to look um, is not only motivating, but, you know, in terms of like manifesting what you want, you have to picture it and know what you want to get there. It's so funny because like your brain can't tell the difference between what you imagine and what is real. Yes. So if you imagine yourself on the stage for that competition, or even maybe more relatable for more people out there, when you imagine yourself in the gym, at the machine, doing the workout, it becomes a lot more real for you to actually get out there and do it. When you imagine yourself looking the way that you want to look, I feel that it has to be realistic. Like you can't go too unrealistic because then your brain has trouble actually seeing what that thing looks like. Yeah. You're going to find this newfound energy in that moment that allows you to actually take action and do what you do, what you want to do. For sure. Now you have a new program out that I want to talk about because it's different than any other program I've ever heard of because it's not just fitness, but I know that you partnered with someone who's actually a hypnotherapist for yeah. your program, the brain and body program. So yeah. without me talking more about it, I know this is getting some awesome results for many people. Tell me about this program. What spurred it? Just talk to me all about it. Yeah. So um, I partnered with my friend, Jason, who I worked with a million years ago, we reconnected on LinkedIn. And he was like, Hey, I have a lot of clients that are struggling with diet and exercise that are my hypnotherapy clients. Um, and he's like, I don't have, you know, that's not in my wheelhouse. So what if we partnered and I worked with them hypnotherapy wise, you worked with them nutrition and movement wise. And I was like, Oh, my gosh, that makes perfect sense. Because the mindset is such the struggle, right? Those, those, Sometimes it's core beliefs or affirmations we tell ourselves. So we partner together. We have a 30 day intensive and then we have a four month like mind body transformation. Um, and the clients that we have in there have been having amazing results because it is so important to kind of get to that root cause of maybe what's making them not eat right or making them not get to the gym. So we tackle it from, you know, he tackles it from the mind perspective and I tackle it from the nutrition and movement uh, perspective. And it's been awesome. That's so cool. I like how you like separate it from the, there is an intensive portion, but then there's also like a four month portion. That's I'm guessing a little bit slower or to, to maintain and continue to build on the progress you made in those 30 days. I know a lot of people, especially with programs, cause I went through this myself. And one of the most common questions I got asked was, you know, Brandon, Brandon, I'm so busy already. Like, how am I going to fit in this 30 day intensive? Cause they think intensive and what they think is, I'm going to have to spend hours every single day putting into this program. Like what does it literally look like being a part of the, the brain and body program? Like what's the 30 days look like? What's the four months look like? Like, could you paint a picture for people who yeah. are listening? So it's, um, a lot of hypnotherapy. So I think like on a weekly basis, I want to say a half hour to an hour with Jason spending time with him and kind of really doing a deep dive. And with me, you get a one hour strategy call and then we plot out like where where are the obstacles and challenges? Um, and then I'll work with you to create, you know, custom calories, macros, and then we do weekly, you know, weekly check-ins. We're doing weekly like work. What do your workouts look like? What are you doing? What should you be doing? Um, and so it's it's awesome. So that's the 30 days. You get a one hour intensive, both with Jason and I, Jason does a couple more um, of the calls, you know, the hypnotherapy calls. And then with the four months, it's just expanded over four months. So you'll get like two hour strategy calls with me and we'll either clean out your cupboards. We'll come up with shopping lists and meal prep. Um, it's like whatever your chat. So that's the beauty of it. It's so customized. So with like whatever your challenges, that's what we're going to help you overcome. It's so cool because you get to truly like dive into what is holding you back. You get to reprogram it at the subconscious level with the hypnotherapy. 
And then you get to take the practical steps, which is what you're teaching to actually make progress towards the goal. But the most valuable thing is you've got people in your corner who want to see you succeed. It's not a friend where you start to tell them what you're doing and they're like, oh, that's awesome. And they act happy for you, but they're really not like because they're thinking <laughs> of their own problems. Like it's a group and it's true though. Like mm -hmm. I, I see it everywhere. And you, you know, we all have that one friend. I hope, you know, we all have that one friend who truly is happy for you when you achieve things. But when you're part of these programs, one, you're around like-minded people, two, you've got people in your corner and three, you're going after a specific result where by the end of this program, you're going to be in a very, very different place than when you started. Yeah, for sure. Where can people find more information on the Brain and Body program? Is it right at allisonjacksonfitness.com? Yep, yep. You can go right to my website and you'll see a tab that says work with me. And you can see all the different options there. I have one-on-one, -on -one, I have the Brain and Body, and then I have group uh, coaching programs that launch about three times a year. Okay, very cool. So you heard it here, guys. AllisonJacksonFitness.com. I'll make it easy. The link is going to be right in the description for you to go check out that program. But also, if you want to work with Allison one-on-one, -on -one, you'll have that option there too. Allison, my final question for you is, what is the positive impact that you want to make on the world during this chapter of your journey? Ooh, I love that. That is an awesome question. So my mission is to help inspire and educate people on the importance of self care, um, and to really help working women. Um, you know, you can't fill up anyone else's cup if your cup isn't full. So it's really helping them to prioritize themselves, so they could be the best, for their families, their careers, their business. Very cool. That's an awesome mission. And you are living that mission. I see your content all the time. I love you specifically, because you post video content. <laughs> and I love video content because you get to truly know the person behind the camera much more than you can with a post or even like a smiling picture that you could be smiling one second, but not smiling the second, right? What I like about you is you're constantly creating content where even if people aren't working with you at this moment, you're giving them real tips and strategies that they can use. I see that content on LinkedIn. Is there a specific and best place for most people to follow you or a place where you recommend they follow you? So I've been trying to put a lot of effort into into LinkedIn, um, Instagram and Facebook. So those three are like kind of the three that I um, try to post the, the most content to. Okay. I'm going to include a link guys to Allison's LinkedIn, Instagram and Facebook in the description. So you can go follow her on whatever platform is best for you. And Allison, what a pleasure it's been. I mean, we've talked about self-care, fitness, just living a better life. It's been an awesome conversation. I'm glad we were able to make it happen here. Me too. Me too. I love chatting with you, Brandon. Yep. So I'm looking forward to having you on the show next time. That was awesome. A conversation all about living a better life, a conversation about how you can motivate yourself both mentally physically with visualization to actually take the steps towards getting to the gym or getting more movement into your day or incorporating a morning routine so that you can give more time to yourself before you start the day to give your time to everybody else or your job or whatever it is you do. Just a refreshing conversation with someone who's helping a ton of people to make positive transformation in their life, both in the brain and body program and when you work with her one-on-one. -on -one. So again, I'm going to have links to Allison Jackson Fitness in the description. Click it. Go check out everything Allison's doing on her social medias. Links will be up there as well. And as always, if you found even one piece of value from this show, if you laughed, if you learned something new, if you've thought about something in a different way, then share this show with one person who could use this advice. That's all we ask. Share with one person who also needs to listen to this conversation. Thank you for tuning in live wherever you're listening. Like, follow, subscribe so that you can see all future shows that we do with our other awesome guests that we have on. And until we talk again next time, continue to be better.